Namaste, light workers and star seeds. This is UA Light with your celestial insight on how the upcoming Jupiter and Aries transit will be opening divine doors of destiny, opportunity, and spiritual growth the next five months, December 20th through May 16th, according to your zodiac sign. Stay tuned for a brief overview of the collective celestial significance of this transit and click the timestamp chapter for your rising sun and moon sign to hear the astrology and psychic oracle predictions and advice on how to personally navigate the lessons and opportunities of Jupiter and Aries the next five months. I'll be pulling five soul lesson cards, five divine door of destiny cards, and five oracle cards revealing specific contexts and circumstances that will be a focus so that you have a full picture. It'll be helpful to come back to these messages and the linked ones below as things transpire for you over the next five months. Definitely subscribe and hit the like button and let's get into it. Jupiter transited Aries briefly from May 10th through October 28th of 2022, retrograding back into the last degrees of Pisces right before the powerful eclipse season began. So if you think back to the summer, you'll probably find that big chapters and big things you planned, resolved to do, initiated, or initially launched in certain areas of your life during that time is unfinished business that you are now gearing to carry out, to redo, relaunch, and see through after recently being forced to end, deconstruct, rethink, reconceptualize, and rebuild certain foundational things that affect the success of the new chapter or initiative you're launching and ultimately a new way of being in the world. This period of internal and external reconstruction, redoing, rethinking, and tying up loose ends for the sake of your new initiatives has all been courtesy of Jupiter retrograde in these last degrees of Pisces, which is all about wrapping up big chapters. And it's been helped by Mars being retrograde in Gemini and the eclipses. So now, Jupiter transitions into Aries for the long haul on December 20th. And then on the next day, December 21st, Capricorn season begins. The sun enters Capricorn, followed immediately by our new moon in Capricorn on December 23rd, falling on the winter solstice for those of us in the southern hemisphere. And so where the new moon will also square Jupiter in that critical zero degree point of Aries. Aries and Capricorn are both the major cardinal signs related to creating and grounding new and grand ideas into reality. Aries is ruled by Mars, while Mars is exalted in Capricorn. So Jupiter squaring a Capricorn new moon while it is stationed at the ecliptic critical zero degree of Aries is so incredibly symbolic of multidimensional new beginnings, new chapters, and new inventions sort of being cosmically supported to manifest, have grand impact, and have longevity or long-term impact and success. Especially things that are visionary, transformative, and in alignment with light work, and that are initiated by light workers. So it is positive, and there is a higher intelligence and spiritual significance to this new moon astrology, marking this launch point portal for the next five months, with Jupiter being in Aries. For example, Jupiter is about the grand big picture, and rewarding and expansively infusing our world with the characteristics and scenarios that are associated with whatever sign it is in. And Aries are known to be pioneering, creative self-starters who sometimes have trouble sustaining what they start. 
And so because there can be a great tendency to center the big picture and overlook practical and measured planned details with Jupiter in Aries, the Capricorn new moon squaring Jupiter in Aries at this critical degree is also an omen and a sort of divine instruction to really commit to completing whatever detailed work is required to bring your new projects, new initiatives, manifestations, visions, and resolves regarding your new empowered personal embodiment and ways of being into fruition and into reality. It's really an omen to be committed and accountable. And if you do so, you will be rewarded most likely as Jupiter moves into Taurus, the territory of divine, feminine, and Venusian blessings. So what does Jupiter and Aries signal for the collective? Jupiter magnifies and expands whatever it touches. And generally, Jupiter is connected to higher wisdom traditions and philosophies, education institutions, world travel, and international commerce and manufacturing, and importing and exporting. Overall, it's about how humanity is interconnected and can be in conscious humane connection through shared wisdom teachings, through expanded awareness, travel, and transnational infrastructure. In a nutshell. So while in Pisces, right, this manifested in everyone globally sort of being first to turn to exploring spirituality and higher wisdom traditions, being forced to travel within their inner consciousness while COVID spread globally and shut down and forced our institutions, world travel and international commerce, manufacturing and importing and exporting to transform. In Pisces, it spread illness and magnified issues of global human connection, healthcare, and compassion. So, in Aries, Jupiter is actually really happy. Aries also represents higher knowing and access to spiritual knowledge, high intuition and instinct, humanitarian and pioneering spirit and leadership, problem solving honesty, and self-awareness and confident positive self-belief. So there is a synergy there for earth angels to manifest and have almost like a Midas touch, right? And to become empowered and rise above and beyond a low vibrational beings and circumstances as all of the positive characteristics associated with Aries will be rewarded there will be a synergy for a collective turn where the collective expands their self-awareness, personal courage, adventurous nature, their humanitarian and transformative actions of standing up for oneself, standing up for the oppressed, the underdog, and for causes, something we're already seeing in media, and um, that is amplified really by Mars, which is the ruler of Aries, being in Gemini, which is all about protest. And so with Jupiter and Aries, we'll also see this collective turn where travel and creative entrepreneurship continues to grow. For example, the Great Resignation. Right, which is something that we've seen in the news, which is all about people quitting their jobs to travel and work for themselves and build startups and small businesses with these enthusiastic missions. Jupiter and Aries will also encourage people to stand up to injustice and abusive thought leaders in higher education and to really transform and bring modern spiritual ideas into wisdom traditions and schools of thought. Aries will also most likely be these people who are doing so. We will also most likely see efforts to transform and improve global commerce and manufacturing, supply chains, and also be forced to kind of face 
and discuss the ethical and pragmatic aspects of these relationships, especially with more people going into entrepreneurship. Issues surrounding war, protests, national security amongst the great power countries, and a discussion around the military industrial complex will also continue to be front and center, most likely. Additionally, um, the fire signs, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius ruled signs and houses, they'll most likely be blessed and positively transformed. So in addition to listening to the following readings according to your rising sign, your sun sign, um, and even your moon sign, definitely look at your individual chart to see what houses you have ruled by Aries. Leo and Sagittarius for insight into what may be expanding for you. Given that uh, Jupiter in Aries will also be um, positively aspecting any sort of houses ruled by Leo and Sagittarius and also the sort of um, scenarios associated with Leo and Sagittarius. I think that issues surrounding child care, child abuse, um, and even pet travel stipulations will be sort of front and center of debate and transformation with this astrology. So let's get into some key Jupiter and Aries transits. So as mentioned, Jupiter and Aries will generally increase the impulse and efforts of activism, self and collective advocacy and transformation that have been in effect for a long time. Its upcoming conjunction to Chiron, which is the planet of the wounded warrior and master healer, and to Eris, which is the divine feminine warrior, will also influence people to continue their deep healing of trauma exploration of healing arts to help with trauma and their self-discovery and identity development while it will also continue to sort of increase the impulse to assert boundaries to assert one's rights and make choices that are more about personal happiness and breaking free from abuse toxic relationships toxic group think and circumstances that impede one's ability to be their authentic true self especially in terms of um, your personal aesthetics appearance beliefs and values and being able to freely express your creative ideas so the jupiter conjunct chiron transit occurs on march 12th so you'll most likely be experiencing some sort of sort of healing and emotional breakthrough on that day. Other important transits include um, the Venus conjunction with Jupiter on March 2nd. Venus will align with Jupiter on March 2nd and it'll be a pretty lucky day for things like socializing, promotion, enjoying, pleasures, vacations even, um, beauty pampering, art and entertainment. Um, now that I think about it, it may also be um, one of those days including um, the March 28th Mercury conjunct Jupiter transit where we might hear more news related to different countries offering more um, nomad visas. Um, I'm just getting that as a sort of download. Um, but back to <laughs> the March 2nd Venus conjunct Jupiter transit, that'll be a really good day for artists to release music and creative projects um, and even for initiating new love and financial relationships and really being able to make good impressions or have like successful negotiations and commercial ventures in terms of jupiter also sort of um giving us excess right and extremes it could be possible to experience love bombing or even sort of stalking um <laughs> in terms of someone expressing um sort of passionate desires towards you and interest um on march 22nd we will have the new moon in aries at uh, that critical zero degree it'll be a new moon eclipse and um of course, as the moon continues to move, it will then pass over and align with Jupiter. Um, 
And so it'll be a pretty, pretty fantastic new moon, I think, for making some resolutions, trying to do some manifestation and ritual work and magic. Um, and then on March 28th, I mentioned Mercury will conjunct Jupiter at 18 degrees. And it's really going to be a day where we feel sort of, goodness, really optimistic, right? And like we have really good ideas, um, ideas that are visionary and big and brilliant and inspiring. It'll be a really good day for marketing campaigns and important communications as well, where maybe you're um, pitching or promoting new ideas and different perspectives. It'll be a really good day for maybe finding um sort of locking key details, um, things that you've been searching for um, that could be really critical to any sort of new ideas or long-term plans that you might be interested in. And in general, it'll also be maybe a good day for making long-term plans related to international travel um, and maybe even actually taking some sort of um, international trip. I'm also really thinking that that might be a transit that gives us some good news from foreign affairs, you know, in terms of countries, more countries adopting um, nomad visas and things like that, that allow more ease for international travel um, in favor of the nomad lifestyle. All right. And then one of the other big ones is April 11th. And uh, the sun will align with Jupiter on this day. And while I didn't list it here, um, Eris is also in Aries um, at around 23 degrees. And so while the sun will conjunct Jupiter um, at 21 degrees, it will also be conjuncting Eris. And Eris, like I mentioned, is that divine feminine warrior planet that is really all about activism. It's about the underdog. It's about the spiritual warrior um, truly coming out on top and standing up for their rights. And so I imagine that this might be a particular transit where we possibly see an uprising. We possibly see some sort of victory with regards to some sort of activist effort. Um, but in general, too, it's going to be one of those transits where there is increased vitality, increased just movement and um just energy in the collective and where we might be really optimistic, maybe really generous, right? Um, and where it'll be a really good time to sort of pitch yourself, to take steps to grow your business, to um, initiate significant relationships, and to really just take some sort of big, brave, empowered step towards some sort of goal that you have that could be really, really transformative for you. All right, and so let's get into the individual astro tarot insight and spiritual advice that came through. These were so exciting, <laughs> and um, you'll be able to check the timestamp and go directly to the zodiac sign of your choice related to your sun, moon, and rising below. Hello, dear Aries. So this is such an exciting and like a huge, huge transit for you. Jupiter is going to be in your first house. You already got a taste of it for a little short while this summer. But it's definitely going to be about shaking up your life um, and giving you the Midas touch and really sort of pouring like gasoline on your blossoming abundance, right? <laughs> So with Jupiter having been in 12, coming into the first house for just a hot second um, before it went back into the 12 and now coming back to the first, it's like your self-concept, your foundational psychological wellness, your philosophical beliefs about the world, self-worth, confidence, your familial, your personal and business relationships, and your ways of making money, 
they have all been in serious transformation for years. And so now it's like they're going to be reaching a point of pressure and even combustion, but it's going to be for relief and karmic rewards and blessings according to however committed you've been to your spiritual warrior path and healing from trauma, you know, passing tests and integrating lessons related to your faith in the face of the unknown and your intuition, right? And all of your efforts towards your visionary goals and your leadership. If you look at the cards, you definitely see that you are already and will continue to be facing big choices that will fundamentally change your life, but ultimately lead to happiness, right? The cards definitely suggest that there's a knowing that you're currently unhappy and that you want to make plans to elevate your career and where you live so that they all provide you psychological safety, sacred spiritual space, independence, and a sort of creative and aesthetic freedom. Now, the gist is that if you've rebuilt and matured your core self-concept, truly understanding your values, your power, and your potential to build a prosperous life based on your unique creative and spiritual abilities, and if you've reckoned with and released pain from trauma, broken toxic bonds, and erected the necessary new boundaries and financial literacy foundations to protect incoming prosperity, then this transit is going to be somewhat intense as a sort of final exam of integration, but ultimately so liberating, healing, and blessed, filled with opportunity for heart healing, for closure, for networking, and making incredible professional strides and impressions and new relationships, and travel, travel, ultimately closing what has been a long chapter of pain, challenge, and deep shadow work, of trying to find safe space and align with your purpose. The cards definitely suggest that there will be opportunities to travel um, internationally, to travel to temples, to sacred sites, and even about uh, accessing sacred knowledge through higher ed or other types of educational trainings, right? It's also about honoring your body as your temple, right? Your first house is connected with your appearance. It's connected with your sense of identity, how you adorn yourself. Um, and so I certainly see this as about you honoring your body as your temple, through yoga, through meditation, and also through detox. Um, we have this card here, one of the divine doors that shows, um, you know, these doorways certainly suggest a sort of spiritual passage, you know, um, rite of passage and, and journey, right? That is just, just very spiritual. And we see one of these cards here, the one under purpose looks like a sauna, literally. So I'm definitely seeing some things about detox and wellness there, um, connected to the ways that you take care of your body. Um, I'm also seeing that, um, goodness, Pluto and Saturn stationing direct has already been affecting your professional career um, and its relationship to media, social networks, and your visionary goals. And so with Jupiter coming back through your first house and traveling all the way through, it's really going to be about completing the sort of destruction and overhaul of your former life. And you using talents and knowledge of yours that has been hidden or put on hold, right? And you rebirthing your new empowered life in every way. A lot of you, you're aware of your purpose and passion and how it includes you using your spiritual and creative gifts. How you are a powerful thought leader, a wisdom teacher um, in the making are already, right? But for some of you, you're doubting how and whether and all of the details of how it will play out. 
right? And, and when it will bring in a particular certain amount of money and freedom that you desire. For many of you, you, you've started this thing, you've launched this thing, you've been building the foundations for this thing, and you know and are starting to see how it will make you very rich, actually. <laughs> um, and uh, it's about, this new chapter is going to be about, you know, you making executive decisions now you know and truly sort of embodying the leader that you know you are and the leader that you're capable of being saturn and pluto are you know sort of in addition to jupiter and aries are asking you to really rise to your power right to not get distracted by any setbacks and to really complete the tasks at hand which you are more than capable of right and to continue to demonstrate your mastery from all life's tests and you know to keep maintaining your integrity and your uniqueness while you are showing a sort of blend of mature and kind assertiveness in your dealings now Healing wounds related to you being in your power is going to be really key for a lot of you. Being able to really make the most of the divine doors and the opportunities that are going to be opening for you with this transit, right? Gifting you a sort of Midas touch, right? For some of you, there's been a dilemma, right? Of how to shine and express yourself, how and when to reveal certain talents and be in power and purpose and not be constantly targeted by narcissistic and conservative gatekeepers, parasites, malicious competitors, and those who are jealous of your light and your attractiveness, to just be quite honest, right? And so thinking about the fact that we have the purpose card <laughs> And the silent skill card directly under it. And then the door to value card in reverse under that. I think for some of you, you are sort of being instructed to keep your net worth and certain skills and sort of visionary plans a secret. You know, and to really use your instincts and your intuition to know when and how to reveal certain things. And to really just handle your business like a boss, right? <laughs> In terms of how to protect and disguise your dealings and not overshare, right? And make yourself a target. Just know how to move. You got to move like the emperor now. You got to move like the emperor. <laughs> and it's like you are being given divine permission to practice a sacred selfishness. And, you know, just being really encouraged to not lose sight of or let up in achieving your goals. And so while the stars are continuing to align, right, that may mean keeping your plans, especially uh, relocation and travel plans, right, a secret. So, but still, right, you're encouraged to still shine, right, in all of the ways only you can and that you've been preparing for for so long. We got the magician card right here. We got the freedom card right here. We have passages, the passages card right here, right? Which says, spiritual signs of inclination. You're walking through passages of your transformation. You essentially owning your power, right? And so it feels like a risk, right? Exactly because... Of the amount of uncertainty, the amount of blocks, the destabilization, you know, that the few, the last few years have placed in your path. But that's exactly it. It was pressure for the diamond. Like you, you don't just get all these powers without going through nothing. Like it was, it was preparation. And so your success and your breakthrough is here. And it will be a reward for you surviving things that cause breakdowns for anybody else the universe is saying to trust them to trust your instincts your one-of-a-kind talents and be the magician using your Midas touch you are worthy of the abundance the magic freedom and happiness coming to you so the gist of your message is 
Put your crown on and claim it. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Oh my goodness. Jupiter is going to be in your 12th house. And it is all about you exploring your internal landscape, your psyche, and your passions. I am linking an SOS Akashic reading that I did for you down below. And I am begging you to please watch it because so many of the things apply here and resonate with the cards, right? And so what I'm getting from all of this, the astrology and the cards here, is that your philosophical ideas, spiritual beliefs and practices, your world views, and even where you want to reside in the world has been in deep flux and been forced to expand for some time now. You've been completing and achieving big accomplishments related to opportunities you've created for yourself, despite dealing with blocks, ego battles with seniority figures, and all kinds of glass ceilings, right? Dealing with all of this behind closed doors. And in many ways, you've been grappling with a feeling of stuckness and a notion of a glass ceiling. But I have to say, and I'm just going to give a warning here, Taurus. I'm going to be giving you some tough, tough love here. <laughs> Take it as coming from Uranus <laughs> in addition to Jupiter and Aries. All right. Um, but these feelings of stuckness and this notion of a glass ceiling is actually based on the people that you've aligned with. And a sort of self-image that you've created and that you want to break away from but that you haven't broken away from <laughs> and the sort of accompanying feelings of jealousy that you have about competitors and even other people who embody a likeness that you desire right and so it's about your own choices to settle because of your disdain for discomfort and because you don't want to be on the receiving end of jealousy yourself from shining so brightly right jupiter in your 12th house of the unconscious the subconscious psyche and you know psychology is going to be all about spiritual awakening and healing you delving deeper into esoteric wellness and psychological knowledge to deal with your demons and be honest with yourself about your visionary goals and your dreams and your identity because while Uranus is in your sign, kicking up shit, <laughs> when Jupiter passes through Aries, it's coming to your, it's coming to your sign. <laughs> so it's important that you do this deep work now. There's definitely something here about being jealous, about eye for an eye shenanigans, about secret competitions where people are trying to one up each other while also dreading being on the receiving end of jealousy for being true to yourself and your calling, right? I'm also sensing that there's like some sort of guilt around selfishness and choosing oneself. Generally, just this sort of dilemma of making yourself small and limiting yourself to doing the same things that you've already mastered to appease and not outgrow others around you, even though you know you have. And also doing things just for monetary comfort and because you know that you can achieve something <laughs> by doing it, right? Versus true passion, right? And that has to do with ego around being a beginner again and starting something new. And also some sort of practical fears, right? Of how that could affect your money. But what I'm seeing here is that you do have some sort of new goal, right? Um, a new idea, passion that you want to explore, maybe a new lover. And Jupiter and Aries will be about you resolving to pursue your passions and, you know, being led by love, really. Um, and even being pursued by a lover if, you, if you're not in a relationship. But you have been considering how all of these things mentioned have and will continue to affect your career, your reputation, and money should you surrender to adventurous growth. 
right? For many of you in college or academia, committed love and business relationships, you're finally ready, you're finally ready to end these um, partnerships, fundamentally transform them, or create new partnerships, right? A lot of you have an interest in shaping your life around travel and learning new things and just new goals that will enhance your creative and financial independence in new ways, right, after contemplating them for a long time. Pluto and Saturn Direct and Mars and Gemini in your second house of money and resources and self-worth will be working with Jupiter and Aries, right, to help you finally push past any external and internal psychological obstacles on what has been a long journey of reinventing yourself and reinventing your life. You'll be called to really heal any wounds that have kept you from pursuing your passions and to really answer the calls of your spirit. I wish you healing during this transit and this time of spiritual awakening and bravery. Hello, dear Geminis. So Jupiter in Aries is all about Jupiter moving from your 10th house of career into your 11th house, right? And the overall sort of theme and title of your reading based on the astrology and cards was Christ Consciousness and New Neural Networks. So in terms of the astrology, right, Jupiter and Aries in the 11th house signals a time when your ventures related to e-commerce, YouTube, technology, and media will be launching and expanding and when you'll also be expanding your social networks, um, launching startups, expanding your clientele and fan bases, you'll most likely be coming in contact with and seeking out more like-minded people or beneficial contacts related to your shared hobbies or values or um, professional goals or you know, people within your shared professions and industries, while you're also going to be shaping your ventures more explicitly around your independence, your personal visionary goals and ideas, and your personal benefit. The cards and the psychic intel I received gave a bit of insight as to the context of these personal and professional relationship changes and growth that are in store for you. And a lot of it has been a long time coming. A lot of it has also been sparked by Mars being in your sign for the past few months, right? And so the psychic message in the cards really also gives some forewarning. And in general, um, do check out the eclipse season and even the recent Gemini full moon and the uh, SOS Akashic reading I did for your sign. They are so rich with wisdom, more astrological insight and advice for navigating what is a tricky time for you and also a really sort of deeply, deeply spiritually activated time for you as well. So I have to say, when I pull the first two cards, empathy and love in reverse, I felt this huge blow in my gut. And it was insight that you have or will be dealing with huge disappointment with regards to not receiving love, support, and empathy from close friends and family in your life. You know, people not giving you the benefit of the doubt when they know your heart and when you've given them the benefit of the doubt and showed up for them. Just huge, huge, devastating abandonment and disappointment. And I was sort of moved to share this sort of personal experience with you, which is that I had a personal experience with this after... Um, losing a court case 
against an institution, a boss, and colleagues who deeply betrayed and sabotaged me and um, tried to ruin my reputation and my livelihood. These people tried to take everything from me and devastate my livelihood. And while I had evidence and while all the people who I trusted, people who had witnessed um, everything that happened to me for years and who agreed with me, shared my feelings, knew that I was in the right and um, that what was being done to me was unjust and deeply discriminatory, they all turned their back on me, right? Because ultimately they sided with this person who they thought also had power over their livelihood and their careers. And in fact, related to the court case, I was so right <laughs> and it was so glaringly unethical that the lawyers of this you know, big institution, they knew that they would lose because my evidence was also so incriminating. <laughs> and so they had my case thrown out based on a jurisdiction technicality, right? They went through tooth and nail to just find a loophole as opposed to actually dealing with the glaring discrimination and injustice. And in these, in this court case, I had to listen to the respondents try to paint me out to be some mentally disturbed and incompetent person, right? Despite the glaring fact and all of the evidence that me, my genius, my ideas, and my work ethic was the source of not only their success, but also success of my colleagues and growth in the field in which I was working with. Right. And I remember after hearing those testimonies that day, after I had got out of it, after it was over, <laughs> I remember that I broke down. I broke down in empathy, actually. And I experienced this powerful, powerful heart chakra activation where. I found myself on my knees crying and praying, not just out of devastation and disbelief, but praying for them. Because I realized it took a deep level of insecurity, scarcity, evil, and lack of integrity to do what they did to me. And to go through the lens that they did to justify it. <laughs> and it was a visceral experience of feeling like in this card that we have here for you, Healer of the Ages. It was this visceral spiritual activation experience where I felt, I felt the light, I felt the energy just burst through my heart chakra. My, and I realized that the divine gave me that tower experience to open my heart to a level of love and empathy and understanding of human duality, the light and the dark, and also to Christ consciousness that most people lacked. I realized that the divine gifted me with that higher knowledge of how much I'm worth and what I'm able to build and rebuild and inspire to generate money and success that surpasses that of this institution, that network of people, and that boss who were truly exploiting me and gaining more from my genius than I was. Right, And so while doing this reading, 1111 and 333, the angel numbers, appeared, right, signaling that this is something that 
is happening for you, maybe has happened for you, or will happen for you, related to this Jupiter and Aries transit. And that there is something here where you will most likely have some sort of spiritual phenomenological experience that heightens your intuition and facilitates a sort of heart opening in a sort of spiritual awakening based off of these relationship experiences. It is going to be about opening a new level of growth for you spiritually from your ability to integrate your duality and find empathy and see both sides of situations despite situations where that was not reciprocated and offered to you. I see this as being a time of you connecting with and receiving upper chakra activations that connect you with Christ consciousness, right? And one of the things that happened when I was uh, doing the card reading and then the time where I was also putting your reading together was that my spirit baby, my cat, she just came and gave me a hug. Like in both of these instances when I was doing the readings for your sign only. And my baby is spicy. <laughs> like she's spicy. She's not always affectionate and want to hug all upon me. Right, but she came and just gave me a hug. And it was this message, right, of God's pure love for you and you remembering that you are God's child and that you are being reborn, that you can be reborn, and that your life can. I think it's also a sign that um, maybe getting a pet or Spending more time with children can even help with healing your heart and you feeling that pure love. Pets and children tend to be the purest forms of healing these kinds of wounds of betrayal and abandonment and even aloneness, right? When you're going through a spiritual awakening experience related to Christ consciousness and heart opening and empathy, right? But we definitely see here um, in the cards that there is something about, you know, upper chakras being activated. There is a message that fierce spiritual protection surrounds you. And that is important for you to be smart and transmuting lower energies and protecting yourself. Um, when I was pulling your uh, divine door messages, right, the little small cards, I got throat chakra, like some clear sentient activity that was going on where my throat chakra just felt really, really, really activated. Um, and I got the messages that, you know, communication, your immune system, immunity, healing remedies, um, and even uh, sunlight and breath work for your health and regulating the heat in your body um, are things that will be really good for you. Um, during this transit because it's in Jupiter and Aries you got Mars in your sign it's a whole lot of fiery energy <laughs> right and a whole lot of like light energy too right that you're gonna need to like integrate in your body right and so I'm I was just getting those sort of psychic messages to give to you also to moderate coffee and dairy um, so that you don't increase inflammation in your body. Um, Gemini actually rules the lungs, right? And so it's intimately connected with our immune system and immunity. Um, and so that's also why I was giving those sort of messages that sunlight and breath work, um, regulating the heat in your body, um, moderating foods that increase inflammation in your body. All of those things are going to be really good for you. And in general, too, there's this theme of inflammation and inflammatory language. <laughs> and so um, I was called to share with you that um, my Christ consciousness experience was also this moment where the divine, you know, really told me to just 
be still, you know, and not worry about the abandonment, the injustice, anything that I felt I was losing or that was being taken away from me. And also that nothing would be handled by the justice system of man because the justice system of man is null and void. It's the matrix. We know that, right? And so trust that things will be handled karmically. And even with that, right, with with all of the confirmation that you are getting about how duly connected to Christ consciousness you are, it's important, too, that with this Jupiter and Aries and Mars being in your sign, that you be aware of trying to force your beliefs on others, right? Accept that you can't change people. Don't be dogmatic and, and don't play into any futile back and forth situations, right? This is certainly what the cards are saying. Don't resist change and don't try to force people to change. Um, don't do things that you'll regret. If you've taken the high road and been accountable in relationships, your overall message here is to accept the past and release any regret and guilt. You know, um, and focus on all of the visionary things that you're going to be building um, and that you have the potential and the power to, to build in terms of being someone who uh, may be a powerful healer and someone who has the ability to create something pretty cool and visionary. Dear Cancers, hello Cancers. So Jupiter is going to be transiting your 10th house, which is all about expanding your career and trying to find a happy medium, right? It's been a magical, mystical, and expansive time for you that will only continue with Jupiter in your 10th house of career. Your journey of healing yourself and others, learning more about wisdom teachings and being a wisdom teacher yourself who may be viral on social media and who has been making powerful and transformative connections and business investments has been a long one and it's only going to continue to expand. In many ways, you're coming to a sort of matriculation point in your long journey of spiritual initiation, exploration, and self-mastery, and career growth, where you're going to be taking a moment to really gain a full view of the legacy and assets you've been able to and have the potential to create for yourself in any chosen or biological family. And just really reflecting on how you are the pillar right? And so for some of you, this has been and will continue to put pressure on you in being financially literate and renegotiating the terms of your partnerships and relationships, be it familial, romantic, and business. And for some of you, you may be deepening or ending commitments and relationships related to incompatibilities. And it's been a long time coming. Your journey of choosing yourself really deepens with this transit. And the cards here show a sort of reflection about jumping into burning buildings. That's really what I got from these divine door cards here. Reflecting on jumping into burning buildings, being self-sacrificial. And um, it suggests some healing and, and some honesty about a savior complex, um, about maybe even some father wounds related to your own father, fatherhood, or the father of your children, and healing some sort of childhood trauma wound even. But generally, I definitely see here that you're looking back at trauma to move forward in your career and reflecting on how it brought you such a wealth of knowledge and experiences, right? And so many of the divine door cards here suggest looking out from your inner landscape, sharing your visions and your spiritual wisdom, and maybe even going inward, right? Balancing 
connection with your innermost self, your health, and your idea of inner success with visibility and stardom, right? Given that you've had some visionary ideas and network connections, and they likely suggest that the sky is the limit and you have the potential to really expand your business ventures and income in ways beyond what you imagined. The overall theme here is also about balance to avoid burnout. Maybe even being honest with yourself about burnout and moving forward from burnout. I definitely see a theme here of wanting to reconnect with your inner child uh, maintain a sort of lighthearted fun um, amidst your busyness and um, maybe even reconnecting with old artistic passions that you've put on hold. You may become an empty nester during this time or have children move out of the home. Um, I see for some of you that you're going to be deepening your interest and in knowledge about psychological health, psychic gifts, and astrology. For some of you, you may be meeting someone who is really wise in these areas and who has a wealth of knowledge or um, even enrolling and investing in education to learn more about these topics and to learn more about wisdom traditions and trauma studies and spiritual wellness studies to enhance your career where you feel more confident in your role as a teacher with these kinds of knowledges to share. You may be seeking an accountant to manage growing wealth, um, investments, and even hiring new operations managers if you sell products and own franchises. Overall, I definitely see a contemplation about how to keep living with honesty and integrity and balanced health while you spread more of those things in the world through your business ventures related to well-being, food, and even gut health. <laughs> I definitely wish you the best, Cancers, and that this is a um, just healing and prosperous transit for you. Hi, Leos. So this Jupiter in Aries transit is coming from your eighth house into your ninth house. And the ninth house is going to be all about expanding knowledge and transnational reach. In terms of Jupiter coming from the eighth into the ninth, what I'm definitely seeing in the cards here is something about recovering from self-doubt and surgeries. Now, the eighth house is related to things like the medical industry and medical procedures. And so I'm definitely getting a message connected to that. Jupiter in your ninth house wants you to be open to growth and to seize opportunities and be an eternal student versus being fixed in any ideas or patterns that don't help you to grow in any way. Jupiter in your ninth house is about expanding your philosophical and cultural worldviews and also about opportunities to physically travel the world, maybe for career um, and maybe even about expanding commercial manufacturing relationships and contracts and also deep diving into wisdom teachings, right? You'll be given opportunities to learn that might lead you to learning more about health remedies that could be helpful if you've had any sort of health issues or even surgeries and things that you are still recovering from. And in general, the things that you'll be learning could help to deepen your values and your integrity and generally sort of take shape as personal growth that helps your career. Relationships and partnerships with powerful people you're learning from, maybe in arts, entertainment, and beauty, are changing your career big time. And this is momentum that you can continue to build. Um, definitely take notes from power figures on how to be a good leader and build trust with the people that you work with and employ. One thing that I'm definitely getting for you, Leos, is that people have no idea your reach. They have no idea who you know. <laughs> and when they find out 
who you connected to, when they find out your power moves, it shocks people, right? And in general, the way you are moving in silence and peace and power is is the vibe. It is the thing, right? In many ways, this is due to a sort of spirituality and confidence and understanding of your heritage that you've been exploring and that you're continuing to explore and even nurture in silence. Um, but definitely continue to be strategic, supportive, and neutral in your relationships and stay out of any gossip and petty competition um, in your industry um, and related to the people that surround you, right? This leaves the lane open for you to shine, actually. And one of the things that I'm definitely seeing is that Jupiter in Aries is here to help you push past any refusal to learn from mistakes and actually to embrace failure, right? And I'm also getting that Jupiter in Aries is going to be sort of putting you face to face with lessons on integrity, right? And your values. I'm getting with the cards here that you may have released a project or even a product, right? And one of two things happen. Either its failure humbled you or its success succeeded your expectations. And either way, it taught you a lesson about what happens when you create from your head, your heart, or with your ego. Jupiter in Aries is all about lessons of what happens when you create with authenticity or wear a mask, and whether you're creating for shallow gain or deeper purpose, whether you're being formulaic or inventive, right? Um, and related to that, I'm getting that for those of you who develop products or maybe have makeup products, that you may be doing product formula research, right? Um, and in general, sort of renegotiating your relationships with manufacturers and importing and exporting relationships and just making those types of decisions in this area to take your career to a new level after some sort of loss or even a bad investment. Definitely see that you're going to be making contractual supply chain decisions related to business launches, relaunches, or expansion. And I definitely see something here about um, maybe some insecurity about looks, your dance abilities, and maybe bouncing back from surgeries and health issues, right? In general, this whole reading, I was getting so much about um, or tapping into a collective of Leos who may be artists, right? Performing artists, celebrities, what have you. Um related to that message, right? And I'm definitely seeing that there's a heart and throat chakra awakening that will be happening with this Jupiter in Aries transit. It's also going to be a transit that facilitates travel, right? Or touring, right? As an artist. I'm also seeing too that you may have worries about how motherhood or pets and pet travel stipulations, how these things could interfere with or affect your travel for tours or for commercial business or in general, um, any issues with commercial business plans related to travel. But in general, I definitely hope that it is an expansive and successful and enlightening transit for you, Leos. Definitely take a look at the rest of the readings, looking at your sun, moon, and rising sign. Give us a like and subscribe for more. Hello, dear Virgos. So this Jupiter in Aries transit is going to be moving through your eighth house. The eighth house is all about marriage. It's about childbirth. It's about relationships where there are shared assets. It's about negotiating how much you own and share of yourself physically, emotionally, and financially. It's also about psychological transformation, maybe spiritual, right? And even psychological transformation of your ideas related to taboo subjects. It's about your relationship to the medical industry, maybe having medical operations or being in the helping professions. 
some of you have been studying and learning and are approaching a sort of big milestone in your career or a degree or a trade certification in areas related to wellness, health, and helping professions to enhance your career. Or with some sort of creative entrepreneurial project or commercial venture. When I was doing your um, oracle reading, I got the angel number 211, which is an angel number that also suggests new levels of awareness and new experiences are in store related to all of those eighth house themes that I just mentioned. Some of you are deciding to take on higher education, a higher learning of a degree or trade or commerce venture after a long time of deliberating whether you can commit to the time and money investment. For those who have been in education, you may be passing a milestone that really allows you to matriculate past difficult experiences with certain teachers or past a part of the program where the workload really made it difficult for work-life balance. It's almost as if you've experienced these really high highs and low lows when it comes to results and taking care of your own health and time spent with children, hobbies, or even enjoying sex, right? Something that has been a bit anxiety producing for you and your organizational standards, particularly because it seems that exploring and expressing your sexuality, sexual empowerment, body positivity, and considering cosmetic surgery or ways to connect deeply with your life force energy have been things that you've been craving. It may be that you are now being explicit with a committed partner about new sexual desires and your desire to transform and open up the agreements in your relationship so that you can explore these desires. For famous people, I'm getting that NDAs are being updated for these and other kinds of relationships as you expand your circle or your family. For others, I'm getting that negotiations and contracts with partners and investors and commercial ventures are being updated and reviewed based on the efforts to date and that you have some exciting career things to launch and people to hire and fire <laughs> and even desire to explore. The pressure will be lifting with Jupiter and Aries, however, and it's just going to be super important that you're on top of your own health while you take on this new chapter of uplifting others in your career. In general, the cards also show this. They point to a sort of holistic self-love and self-care journey being a focus where the addition of a baby, a pet, um, family health history, or your own health issues sort of force you to take on responsibilities for another life or rethink how you care for yourself so that you can be there to help take care of others. I'm also seeing for some of you that there may be pregnancy after miscarriage or trying to have a baby for a long time. Definitely seeing in the cards a bundle of joy, perhaps twins. I'm seeing dilation. I'm seeing epidural. I'm seeing having a psychic experience or even a crown chakra awakening due to pregnancy and childbirth. I'm also seeing that... Um, Maybe you or a loved one battling health issues related to blood pressure, blood sugar, diet and cholesterol, um, maybe heart health, heart failure, um, maybe even possibly losing a loved one and contending with your ideas and beliefs about death, DNA, genetics, heritage, and the afterlife. And these are all things that sort of happen with big transits through the eighth house. It can also mean connecting with the dead, right? And on the other hand, giving people their flowers while they're alive. I also got an angel number 222, right? And this was connected to um, a sort of theme I'm seeing here in the cards where it's like you're going to be opening your mind to multiculturalism and multicultural traditions 
birth rituals, maybe ancient theories of science and the world genome. All right, these could be things that you're studying in school, perhaps. Um, and also in terms of multiculturalism and just opening your mind related to what might be conventionally considered taboo ideas, I see things like dating outside of your race, religion, and even your usual gender and sexual preference. We mentioned some of that related to the astrology. Um, I also see open relationships, right? And generally, this transit sort of um, facilitating you choosing relationships based on resonance versus biological or even racial kinship, right? For some of you, these are things you're forced to think about with relationship to raising your children. Maybe children in society are opening your mind to new ideas about gender fluidity and even trans identity, right? I'm seeing someone expecting to have a son and that a uh, child identifying as or expressing themselves in feminine and genderqueer or non-binary ways, right? Definitely seeing um, just in general there being all of these sort of scenarios in which you're going to be opening your mind, right? And there's overall just this general theme of taking care of yourself to take care of others. Some of you are already in or entering in care professions, which again will emphasize this need to master this balance and expand your ideas about culture and science because you're going to be interfacing with difference, right? And in general, I see that um, related to this, you may be exploring studies of herbal remedies, um, psychedelics, um, and so much more. But in general, it's about you understanding how important self-care is in this new journey of exploration and spiritual and psychic and even relationship expansions. Take care, Scorpios, and I pray that it is such a beautiful transit for you. Hello, dear Libras. So this Jupiter in Aries transit is going to be coming through your seventh house. Libras, in general, this is such a powerful transformative time for you in terms of favor in the stars, but also being forced to face your shadow aspects since Jupiter is in Aries, which is your opposite sister sign. So do not sh do not shoot the messenger with these <laughs> with these messages here that I have for you um, in terms of what it suggests about you know some shadow work that may be up for you with this transit. So much has changed and is still in transformation, right? Your committed love partners, choices and creative business partners that support revising and expanding aspects of your enterprises. Many of you are considering relocation or continuing to expand commercial ventures that consider fashion, home goods, and lifestyle. There is transformation of your body and self-image through cosmetic surgery your self-confidence, and generally you still claiming and rebuilding all of these aspects of your identity, rebuilding your sense of self-worth, your assets, abundance, independence, and a vision of your legacy that is separate from long-standing codependent relationships and even toxic projections and reputations from your past. You have had and still have an opportunity to sprinkle some Venusian fairy magic, you know, on your legal problems and your reputation and issues in your romantic life. For women in particular, I'm getting that you have had varying issues with fathers of your children and have to consider how they and how any romantic relationship fits into your legacy and your reputation. For some of you, you are and will be evaluating how your own confidence, your integrated masculinity and feminine energy, or lack thereof, and childhood wounds and father issues continue to consciously and unconsciously shape your choices. 
there is going to be a sort of spotlight on examining just how sprinkling Venusian fairy dust on things, how shallow values, surface repairs and appearances, and even fear and avoidance of confrontation versus a deeper honesty and accountability with yourself and others from being in touch with a deep and developed internal sense of self, ethical core values, and integrity in your actions causes some of the ethical and relationship issues you face. Now that was big. But again, this is what Jupiter in Aries is going to be doing. Big personal, political, and partnership choices will be looming, you know, that will affect your home and family life, your finances, taxes, and career. And for a while, you've ignored your gut instincts and even put band-aids, you know, um, on certain matters, hoping that problems would go away. In many ways, you've avoided confrontation and conflict and hard conversations related to breakups, court cases, separating assets, um, court cases related to child support, and taking measures to ensure and protect your business. And with this transit, you'll be called to face these issues and any fears of failure, perfectionism, and people-pleasing, and how they drive you to avoid taking risks or to take too much of a risk to accomplish or attain results that you desire. Jupiter in Aries wants you to not give up when things are not easy and to really tap into mind over matter and to be a doer, not just a dreamer, and to truly fix the roots of any issues with self-worth and any issues within your relationships for your highest good, for the highest good of all involved, and for your freedom. Hello, dear Scorpios. This Jupiter in Aries transit is going to be moving through your sixth house. And it's really all about you tapping into your empowered emperor energy since Mars is one of your ruling planets. And Scorpios, you have just been eclipsed, really, and are now on a journey of mastering a new normal in every aspect of your life, really. Courtesy of a new sense of identity, shaped by new roles you've taken on in your core relationships, and related to children and career opportunities, related to teaching, spirituality, healing, healthcare. And Jupiter in the sixth house is all about how we balance give and take, and is actually about our personal health and how we maintain that balance of self-care when we may also be caretakers or work in helping and health professions. For many of you, this is about you being the sort of pillar of support in your family and other relationships and having to navigate how boundaries with family, um, financial codependency, and being a pillar in a lot of your relationships sort of affects your ability to dedicate time and energy to your own personal self-care and independent enterprises of interest. Definitely with the cards here, I'm sensing that the major sort of theme is you going through lessons of pulling back and letting others learn from their mistakes you sort of giving tough love so that others learn to fly and spread their wings. For some of you, I'm getting that you desire to become an empty nester. <laughs> um, and this could be, you know, you as well in terms of learning to fly and spread your wings. Or you may also be relinquishing some of your responsibilities so that you can explore other opportunities and new relationships and do so without guilt. I'm getting that for a lot of you, um, you are sort of continuing to process s sadness and a sort of fatigue from ending a major chapter in your life where maybe there were secrets revealed and changes in key relationships. 
this is based on, you know, Uranus being in your seventh house, right? And you're making powerful new connections, you know, professionally, personally, with organizations, groups, and just learning how much you know and where you still need to and want to expand your knowledge and working with others in health and wellness. Jupiter will be transiting the sixth house and moving toward your seventh where Uranus and the north, north nodes are. And so there's this sort of looming lesson courtesy of Uranus in your seventh house about committed partnerships. And, you know, that will be obviously come into a head as Jupiter continues to move towards there. And it's going to be about, you know, this being an opportunity for you to keep deep diving and questioning whether you can or should continue to shape your life around unrewarding and asymmetrical loyalties, power dynamics, and overgiving in your life, I'm thinking. And I think the question for you will be, what has, you know, the last chapter taught you about your worth? How much of an asset and powerful organizational leader you are and can continue to grow into? And ultimately, Jupiter in Aries is a sort of boost of energy that will be about you broadening your vision toward being a more powerful and independent emperor of your own life. Hello, dear Sagittarius. So Jupiter is your ruling planet. And Jupiter in Aries is really blessing and expanding opportunities in your fifth house of creativity, arts and entertainment, fame, connection with your inner fire and sexuality, dating, relationships with your mother, children and pets, and in general, bringing you a more lighthearted era of being unapologetically committed to fun and enjoying the fruits of your labor. Many of you will be gaining a clear view of your purpose, you know, and the potential success of ideas that you're working on. It's going to be about you not fearing your power and impact and just really getting rid of imposter syndrome and any darkness that you battle. Coming to understand that the ways you dress yourself, your creative ambitions, and the truths that you speak with your unique blend of bluntness, wit, and humor, how that is actually healing energy medicine for others. And that despite the armor of, you know, avoidance, <laughs> Your deep sensitivity, wisdom, and care about others' well-being really bleeds through and is what keeps karmically blessing you. And if you didn't, I want to affirm you. You really are something like a soothsayer, and your sense of your imperfections and hardships are actually really perfect and powerful. Or said another way, they're your superpower. And Jupiter in Aries wants you to claim and display how magical and attractive you are to flirt with life. Romance and love might be entering your life requiring a new commitment to you balancing your wellness so that you can balance this more well-rounded and fulfilling era of your life. It looks like things really accelerate and come full circle in all areas of your life where there's going to be some long-awaited success, um, passing of a huge milestone, and a huge glow-up, really, that happens after much time and dedication. You will be forced to commit to a healthier diet and building a really solid spiritual sense of self and maybe even connecting to rituals that help you to sustain your health and your new workload and the fun which will be easier with this transit and in part because you will most likely also have a powerful breakthrough in your mental health and understanding of any trauma and any supernatural phenomena that you've experienced and kept to yourself. Jupiter in Aries gifts you spiritual knowledge of what it means to be an empath and highly sensitive and how that's connected to your creativity. 
This will all continue to broaden your creative entrepreneurial success and put you in the spotlight. And we want to see and support you in the spotlight, dear Sag. Many of you have or will gain new guardian angels and experience some supernatural and psychic activity of people who have died connecting with you, actually. Um, and if that means um, suffering the loss and dealing with grief, then my condolences are with you. But in general, this transit will be about you being able to find a deep peace and resolve and opening your ideas to how these sorts of connections and relationships are never really lost and that they're always around us, hoping to connect with us so long as we open ourselves to it. There's also some pretty blatant uh, advice here about health. <laughs> Definitely about attending to your gut health. Don't eat too many spicy foods. I'm also seeing here with uh, one of these divine doors that um, saunas and even running and cardio, right, things that help you to sweat could be really good additions to your wellness routines. Also here, I'm seeing that, you know, be mindful of practicing safe sex uh, with any new relationships and to um, stay up to date on things like uh, travel and uh, even pet travel logistics. Um, pets, travel, child care, and pet care could be things that are pretty important for you if travel is something that sort of picks up for you during this time as well. I wish you blessings of fun and safety and expansion and success during this transit Sagittarius. Take care and definitely leave a comment down below if this resonates and about what plays out for you. Definitely check out the other videos related to your sun, moon, and rising sign and give this video a like. Hello, dear Capricorns. So this Jupiter and Aries transit is going to be traveling through your fourth house. What I'm seeing in the stars, dear Capricorns, is that you've been craving a certain freshness and freedom in your life that really reflects new attitudes about yourself and a certain distance that you feel in relationships that you've had for a long time. Jupiter in your fourth house is related to relocation to a new home, maybe traveling long distance to visit homelands, ruins, family or loved ones, and even expanding your family or expanding your ideas of what family means to you. It could also signal long distance relationships and relate to core wounds and revisiting and rebuilding foundational habits. The cards generally point to these themes as well. They definitely point to heart healing from maybe ending relationships based on long distance and some sort of truth being revealed or some betrayal from a loved one that hits a deep core wound that has been unhealed and that maybe you had worked very hard to try to heal. Some of you have been in long distance relationships and made or will make a move that puts you in closer proximity or moving in together. And for others, it's the reverse and a relationship may be or has been transformed into a long distance one due to your travel lifestyle and it may prove difficult and it may end. It may cause a hit to your self-esteem while you are still navigating a sort of new normal that is about you navigating and pursuing long-standing upgrades and evolutions in your identity, your sense of personal power, your self-worth, your net worth, your body image, gender and sexuality, and creative expression. In general, I'm definitely seeing here that Jupiter in Aries is going to be about you infusing your life with positive self-talk. 
okay and not letting outside opinions determine your sense of self-worth and self-esteem i see that many of you may be isolating to put yourself back together and heal a broken heart i'm also seeing that um, maybe some of you may be having some dental work done and this may be something that raises your self-esteem I'm also seeing that some of you may be reconnecting with someone who you have been at a great distance to or um, not been in connection with for some time. And for others of you, I definitely see this Jupiter and Aries transit ultimately being about you may be creating art or caring for your health and your heart so that you can heal and express yourself and transmute any energies of the past. I definitely wish you healing and blessings during this time and that this Jupiter and Aries transit offers you a sort of renewed sense of self and positivity. Take care. Hello dear Aquarius, this Jupiter and Aries transit is coming back through your third house and I have to say that based on the astrology and the cards here, it's about a lot of hard lessons and courage, court proceedings, and choices. When I was doing your reading, the angel number 522 definitely came through, really complementing what we're seeing here in the cards related to some really critical, drastic changes, choices, and maybe even devastation in some relationships like friendships or close relationships with other loved ones. Jupiter in the third house suggests, in terms of the astrology, traveling for work and maybe working nonstop, you know, on projects related to media, writing, and publishing. It could be about relocating for work or working remotely. Um, and it looks like you're going to be, or either you have, completed a huge milestone in your career you know, building your sense of identity and reputation as a serious professional and, you know, wrapping up a busy season, transitioning into another busy season <laughs> um, and maybe thinking about how a new climate, home environment, time with children, playfulness, pets and new daily routines could be more nurturing and help you sort of renew it looks like, you know, you've been craving rest, reprieve from drama, opposition, and a certain freshness and freedom in your life that reflects your freedom-loving personality and, you know, your desire for fun and even romance. The cards suggest, however, that you are enduring and maybe will endure lots of heart lessons related to courage, court proceedings, and, you know, accountability for choices and friendships and relationships. Jupiter and Aries in the third house almost sort of parallels this Mars and Gemini energy, right? Um, where someone has to battle the spread of gossip, a lot of he say, she said issues, issues with documents and evidence, um, being exposed, feeling exposed, um, and just in general, people being exposed, right? And the cards definitely suggest that solar plexus and sacral chakra work for strength and courage will be really helpful for you to face challenges that threaten your peace, your mental health, and your happiness. Definitely with the divine door card here, um, it's some advice to you know, tap into yoga and meditation to help you feel centered and at peace, regardless of, you know, external circumstances where you might feel like the world is closing in on you or you need a healthy escape. Um, we definitely see the divine door cards looking like courthouses, right? And other, um, the other the first and the fourth one under freedom, looking like you wanting a sort of 
escape, right? And I have to say, Saturn is figuring strongly in this reading, to be honest, because it is in your first house while Jupiter is going to be transiting this third house where Chiron is. And so, you know, it's all about spiritual tests for you to learn to choose relationships carefully, to make mature decisions, and to accept responsibility for your choices and ultimately evolve into your most mature self. Saturn always tests one's mental health and their ability to handle and withstand an onslaught of sort of earthly and career responsibilities and proceedings with the public, with power figures and institutions like court, the police, and even education institutions, right? And it forces you to turn inward for truth and stability and increased faith. But this definitely looks like um, court proceedings with loved ones, right? And that proving to be particularly painful, especially in terms of what is said, what is exposed, um, accusations that are made, and maybe even the ultimate judgments that are made, right? And about having to accept responsibility for choices and to sort of make peace with what this sort of uh the emotional toll of it that's definitely what i'm seeing here definitely what i'm seeing and um it's really saying to trust the universe here trust the universe it says intuition has wandered and led you astray the timing's not yours but the universe at play have faith and breathe right so again there's there's just definitely this overall message to tap into yoga and meditation, develop a practice to help you feel centered in this new era and with these particular proceedings um, and things that you are dealing with during this time. Okay, definitely wish you the best and check out more in terms of what the astrology and psychic messages uh, reveal for you related to your sun, moon, and rising sign. Take good care, Aquarius. Hello, dear Pisces. So even though Jupiter is transitioning out of your sign and into Aries, it's still very magical for you. Jupiter in your second house is about your values, your valuables, money, finances, all of those things expanding and you being faced with choices around um, integrity and extremes and excess and all of these kinds of things, right? And overall, right, Jupiter having been in your sign and continuing to move through Aries, it's about this overall notion of like, who said you can't do it all and have it all, <laughs> right? You contain multitudes and have the gift of being visionary, right? You've been rebelling against people's expectations and glass ceilings with an understanding of your unique favor from the universe and your ability to constantly redeem yourself in the eyes of the goddess and of the public because of your heart and goodness, right? Jupiter in your sign really amplified your Midas touch and will continue with its passage through Aries, giving you that ability to transmute and transform situations in your favor, even when there are hits and misses and errors in judgment. And so if you look at the cards, right, the first card that we have is acceptance and it's in reverse. <laughs> and this is about the fact that you know, even though the card says accepting things you can't change, you have divine favor and a sort of fairy magic with this placement to change perception of anything to your liking. And you've experienced this. 
The question will be whether you should use this power of illusion and persuasion to paint illusions for the sake of public appearance or to make excuses for others' bad behavior because you see the light in them and long for them to embody it so much so that you overlook their shadows and become seen as complicit. And the question of should you use this power to try to convince others that you made the right choices in your relationships and whether using your sleight of hand in these ways is actually you settling with what you're given in love or other situations. So there's a question here about whether your choices are aligned with your highest self-worth and your values. And I'm getting that Jupiter and Aries is really going to be putting scenarios before you where you really have to sit with this. And um, even though this is about your second house, so much of this is uh, about relationships. Um, it seems to be about a romantic relationship um, and how the honeymoon seems to be over in a relationship. Right? This card here says sunset, right? Forgive and forget, cleanse pain and lies. Arise and awaken, see a new sunrise. I'm getting that you're going to be learning a lesson about the limits of your ability to transmute others' darkness and karma for them. How it can backfire and tarnish your light and your karma for being an accomplice and even a complicit bystander. And how that could potentially um, impede your legacy and mess with your money. Right, So I definitely see that as something that's going to be up for Pisces to kind of navigate um, and that will be sort of spotlighted. And I also see here in the cards that there's going to be a focus on you rebuilding your health and your relationship with your body and detoxing things from your life. And that includes, you know, maybe detox and health routines, you know, being something that becomes a priority for you and that could also speak to a need to transform or possibly end any toxic relationships and commitments that you've been in as well um, where you've sort of hoped that someone else that you love would change their toxic ways right but of course, we can't always change people, right? There are limits to that. <laughs> so that's what I see for you, Pisces. But in any case, things will continue to be very expansive and positive and magical for you. And um, I wish you well. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Definitely subscribe to this channel, like this video, and leave your light-filled comments down in the description box about how these things come to pass for you um, over the next few months, what resonates, um, and encouragement for fellow light workers here during this time. It's going to be an incredibly magical and spiritual time in general. Jupiter and Aries will infuse a lot of high conscious spiritual energy into the collective and facilitate a lot of spiritual awakening in general. So stay tuned to this channel for more UA Light Celestial Insight videos and thank you so much for watching.